Hello everybody, welcome to Hellston Outdoors. In this video I'll talk about condensation. When, why, how uh, it forms and what we can do to minimize problems with condensation when we sleep in a tent or in a hammock. At the end I will talk about our hammock, the Hellston hammock, and what we have done to minimize condensation problems in our now, condensation is when a substance is transformed from being a gas to being a liquid. And what we're talking about uh, when we talk about condensation in camping is, of course, the substance water. Water in gas form, steam, is all around us all the time. It's in the air. And as long as water is in the form of steam, as long as it's a gas, it doesn't bother us. It's only when the gas is transformed into being drops of water that it causes problems with wet and cold clothes, sleeping bags, and tents. Condensation happens when the air is saturated with steam so that it can't hold any more steam. This can happen either because we add too much moisture, such as when we cook uh, or boil something on our stoves and we can see drops of water forming underneath our kitchen fan, or when warm and moist air is cooled down. Warm air can contain much more moisture compared to cold air. When camping, there are three things we can do to minimize problems with condensation. One is to avoid moisture in the air. For example, we can avoid setting camp next to a lake or the ocean. That's a very beautiful place to camp, but the air next to a lake will contain more moisture and thus potentially cause more problems with condensation compared to the air further up inland. Lowlands contains more moisture than if we set camp higher up because rain water will be collected in, in lowlands. And the ground always contains moisture. And that moisture will evaporate and that may cause problems for us Luckily, that's easy to fix. If we have a tent, we should make sure that the tent floor is waterproof because then the, the moisture from the ground will still evaporate, evaporate. We can't do anything about that, but it will stay underneath our floor and it will condensate underneath the floor. And as long as it's underneath, it doesn't cause any problems. If we, if we sleep in a hammock with an open tarp, we can still have problems with ground moisture evaporating and being trapped underneath our tarp. But that can also easily be avoided by using a ground tarp or a footprint underneath. Also, we can avoid adding unnecessary moisture to the inside of our tents or uh, underneath our tarps by not cooking inside the tent or under the tarp and by not drying our clothes inside. But still the main source of moisture will be our breath and we can't hold our breath all night long. So we will still have warm moist air inside our tent or underneath our tarps. And that warm moist air needs to be ventilated out and replaced by drier air from the outside. So ventilation is important and it's important that the ventilation is at the top of the construction in, in the roof of the tent or um, the top of the tarp. Now many people think that if I have a tarp 
I won't have any condensation problems. True, you will have less problems than uh, compared to if, if you're in a tent, probably. Uh, but that doesn't mean that condensation never happens under a tarp. It still happens, uh, especially if it's, if it's not windy. And the moist air from your breath or from the ground can rise up and then it's trapped underneath the tarp. So we do want ventilation, especially in tents, but also uh, in tarps. Especially those tarps with doors that are more or less like a tent. Another thing we can do to uh, avoid condensation is insulation. And this is especially important with condensation that can happen in our sleeping bags. Our bodies always releases steam through the pores in our skin. On the top side of our, our bodies, that steam can pass through the sleeping bag or the, the top quilt and up through the air, but underneath this, it's trapped. And if we don't have insulation underneath us, that steam will condensate inside our sleeping bags and cause a wet and cold sleeping bag. Bag, not very nice. However, uh, that problem is very, very easy to avoid altogether, not just minimize, but avoid altogether by having a sleeping pad or an underquilt with sufficient insulation to make sure that that steam is never cooled down enough to condensate. So there are a lot of things we can do to minimize condensation. We can avoid adding more steam than necessary. We can have proper insulation and we can have proper ventilation. But chances are, if it's a cold and rainy night, that we can't avoid condensation altogether. Uh, and I'm sure most of you will have uh, experienced having a tent or a tarp and you can see drops of water forming underneath uh, the tarp or on the inside of the tent. And it's, it's almost impossible to avoid. However, there are things we can do to minimize the problem with condensation and we do that by using an outer tent and an inner tent now some tents come with with an outer tent uh, that is waterproof and an inner tent just made from mesh to keep bugs out um, and that uh, mesh sure the the steam from your breath can pass through the mesh but then it will hit the cold outer tent fabric and it will be trapped there and it condensates and then when that, the drops of condensation becomes big enough and heavy enough or if a gust of wind uh, hits uh, the tent they will drop and if the inner tent is just made from mesh it will just fall right through uh, the inner tent and then down on you which is something we, will, we want to avoid. Now some tents come with uh, an inner tent that is diffusion open, which means that steam can pass through the material, but it's still waterproof when it comes to water and liquid form. There are many different uh, materials that have this property uh, to let steam through, but to stop uh, water in liquid form. The most uh, well-known brand name is Gore-Tex, of course, but there are many other uh, materials like this too. So, the steam from your mouth can pass through the diffusion open material in the inner tent. It hits the cold outer tent and condensation is formed on the outer tent, on the inside, and then when the drops fall, they fall on the outside of the inner tent and then they run down 
the inner tent and away from you. So condensation forms, but it's not a problem. If the floor, of course, only goes to uh, the inner tent, if the, if the floor extends all the way to the outer tent, then those drops will, of course, just drop down on the floor and we just trans transferred the, the problem from, from the roof to the floor. So it's important that the, the floor in your tent only extends to the inner tent. Now, diffusion open materials are really expensive and, and lots of tents don't have them. Uh, so perhaps you just have two waterproof uh, fabrics, one outer tent in the outer tent and one in the inner tent. And that's fine too, as long as you have ventilation in the inner tent as well. Um, and as long as, as the ventilation holes in the inner tent and the outer tent don't overlap so that rain can pass right through, that's just fine. So as long as they're, they're placed side by side, then steam from your breath can go up and out through the ventilation hole in the inner tent and then out through the ventilation hole in the outer tent. So to summarize, don't add unnecessary steam by cooking food or drying clothes inside your tent or under your tarp. Make sure that you have proper ventilation and the ventilation should be on top because that's where your warm, moist breath will go. Use proper insulation underneath you so that the steam from your body doesn't condensate inside your sleeping bag. And use a tent or a tarp with double layers so that moisture can go up and then condensate on the colder outer tent fabric and when the when the drops fall they fall on the outside of the inner tent and they run down and away from you so what have we done with the health the hammock to uh, minimize problems with condensation well first of all the hammock is double layered and you can fit any sleeping pad in between the layers and by choosing a sleeping pad with good insulation you can avoid problems with condensation inside your sleeping bag altogether also the tent and the sleep the, the um, hammock are both waterproof and it's a tent not a tarp so the, the roof doesn't extend outside of um, the hammock. So any moisture coming, evaporating from the ground will just go up and continue up and away. So it doesn't get trapped. You don't actually need a footprint or a ground tarp at all when using the health of hammock. Also, uh, for ventilation, we have brush away some snow. We have two big bug netted windows. If it's not raining outside, you can open them up. And you can open them up from the inside. You don't have to you don't have to go out. With the windows open, you have all the ventilation you need, all the moist air from your breath will go up and away through the bug netted windows. Now, of course, if it's, if it's raining, you don't want them open, so you, have, you can close them. You can actually do this from, from the inside, so you can go to sleep with the windows open, and then if it starts to rain at night, you can just sit up and close them in a matter of seconds. You can still, if it's just a light rain, you can, you can leave the sides open, uh, but if it's raining heavy, you want to close the sides too, 
And again, you can do this from the inside, like this. And now the tent is fully closed, and you keep all rain out. But of course, you risk keeping the moisture from your breath in as well. To avoid this, there is a ventilation hole in the inner tent. I'm not sure if it will show up on the video, but up here, right about where you have your head, there's a ventilation hole that allows moisture from your breath to go up and then out through the bug netted window. Rain will not come in here because those holes don't overlap. And the ventilation up here at the ridge line can be adjusted so you can open it up more or less depending on how much ventilation you need. But still, if it's, if it's a cold and rainy uh, night, condensation may still form. And if it forms, most of it will form on the coldest surface. And the coldest surface will be the inside of the outer tent. So condensation may form here. And when the drops fall, because of wind or because they become too heavy, they will drop down on the outside of the inner tent and then run down the inner tent and underneath the hammock and then fall on the ground. So the Halston hammock will keep you dry both from moisture coming from the outside but also from moisture coming from the inside. Happy camping!